Hey everybody, Michael here with Do It Justice. Welcome to today's video. If you got a chance to see last week's video, I talked about the goals of this solar series as well as some things you need to consider if you're still asking yourself, is solar power right for me? Now, if you're asking yourself that question, be sure to go check out that video first. But for those of you who have made the decision to move forward with your solar ambitions, today I'm gonna to be talking about how to properly size your solar system. Before I jump into today's topic, I'm gonna to take the time to remind you to hit that red subscribe button below if you haven't already. There's also a bell icon right next to that that will keep you notified and up to date on any future videos that we post in this series. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, let's get started. So how much solar do you need? Well, what I'm about to tell you is the most important thing you need to remember when designing any solar system. Every component you buy and every decision you make regarding your solar system revolves around the idea of knowing how much power you need to power the appliances that you want. For example, the size of your solar array, aka the number of solar panels that you need, solely depends on how much energy you use on a daily basis. The size of your battery bank depends on how many days you want your energy storage to last you through cloudy days. The charge controller you need needs to properly manage the energy between your solar panels and your battery banks, and the inverter you need depends on what appliances you want to run off your system. Even the sizes of wires and fuses depends on how much energy is going to be flowing through them. So you may be asking yourself, how do I size my system? How do I know how to calculate all this stuff? Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. The first thing you need to do is you need to list out every appliance that you intend to run off your solar system. I know this might sound tedious, but you need to go around to every appliance and find what's called the power consumption rating label. This is a label that could either be imprinted on the device or charger itself, or it's printed on a label that is stuck to the device or charger. What you're gonna to wanna to be looking for is the output rating for the device. Now, this can either be listed as watts or volts and amps or milliamps. Ultimately, what you're gonna be looking for is the wattage of the device. If it already says it on the label, go ahead and write that number down. But if you're left with volts and amps, I'm gonna give you an easy equation to use so you can convert those into your output wattage. The equation is watts equals volts times amps. And if you have milliamps as your variable, all you're gonna to need to do is take that number and divide that by 1,000. So if you have 500 milliamps, divide that by 1,000, that will give you 0.5 amps. If for some reason you can't locate the power consumption rating label, try to find the model number of your device and either Google search it or just find something that's similar to it online so that you can get an idea of how much power that will draw. Once you list out every appliance that you intend to use with your solar power system, along with the corresponding output wattage, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna ask yourself with each appliance, how long are you gonna use it each day? And for this number, you're gonna use hours as your variable. So if you're gonna use an appliance two hours a day, you're gonna write down two in that space. If you're gonna use an appliance 30 minutes, you're gonna write down 0.5 hours. If you're gonna use an appliance 15 minutes, write down 0.25 hours. I think you get the point. After you've written down all of the hours that you intend to use all of your appliances, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take the output wattage and multiply that by the hours per day that you intend to use each device. For example, let's take that 85 watt computer charger that we had earlier. We're gonna take that 85 and multiply it by the four hours we intend to use it. And then since we have two of those chargers, we're gonna multiply that by two. So 85 times four times two is gonna give you about 680 watt hours per day. You'll wanna repeat this process for each appliance that you have on your list, and at the end of it all, each appliance should have a corresponding watt hour figure. Now, with all of those watt hour figures, you're gonna to want to add them up, and at the end of your list, you should have a figure that is the total number of watt hours that you're gonna be using on a daily basis with your solar system. Now that you have your total watts per hour that you intend to use on your system, what you're gonna wanna do is calculate your solar needs. And to do this, you can go in one of two directions. You could either go nerdy like I did and try to find the technical details and energy losses in the system, or you could use this really easy calculator 
online. And for the sake of ease, I'm gonna use the online calculator. So I'm gonna jump on the computer and show you guys exactly what you need to do. Okay guys, I'm here online taking you through a real-time walkthrough of how to properly size your solar system. And I'm here on the Alt-E store solar calculator. If you type in solar calculator onto the computer, onto Google, you will find a million calculators. The only reason I'm using this one is because it made the most sense to me and I hope it will to you as well. If you wanna see the link to this solar calculator, I will have it in the video description below. So if you wanna follow along, go ahead and go to the video description and click on that link and I will take you through it right now. So when it comes to battery bank sizing, this, this website is actually gonna calculate the size of your battery bank, your solar panels, and your charge controller. So it's gonna do three separate things, but we're gonna first start with the battery bank sizing. Now, when it comes to battery bank sizing here in step one, it says you need the total number of watt hours per day. Now, when it comes to that, we just calculated that number out. And if you recall from our previous spreadsheet, we had 2030.55 total watt hours per day that we consumed. And that's gonna take us now to step two, and it's gonna ask you how many days you want your solar system to run without sun. This is basically saying during cloudy days, how many um, days of storage do you want for your battery bank? And for our specific needs, um, we just decided to go ahead and do two days. This is on the low end because we travel around in an RV and we can kind of compensate for the lack of sun by moving to different locations. But if you're in a stationary position uh, with uh, enough money and enough uh, space to store all these batteries, you're probably gonna wanna do more like um, anywhere from five to seven days of storage. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in two because that's for our system, it works best for us. Again, we're just showing you what works well for us. So. Now on to step three, we're gonna talk about the uh, lowest amount of uh, temperature that your batteries are exposed to. And for us, again, since we move around, we don't get into freezing temperatures that frequently, but worst case scenario, 30 degrees is gonna be the lowest that our battery bank is going to see. And again, if you live in a warmer climate, you're gonna be warmer. If you live in a colder climate, go ahead and uh, put 20 degrees. Uh, this just gives them a good idea of uh, how the batteries will be able to function in the temperatures that they're going to be exposed to. Now that you got that all entered in, it's got the results here and you've got the total number of watt hours that you need for your battery. But for our specific circumstances, we're going to be focusing on this right here. It's the number of amp hours that you need for your battery bank because in the solar uh, battery uh, category they usually categorize everything in amp hours not in watt hours so for us we need 1090 amp hours of battery bank just keep in mind this compensates for a 50 percent discharge rate of your batteries uh, depending on the type of technology that you use for your batteries most of them can only be discharged about 50 percent before you actually damage the batteries i will go into a lot more of this in the future but this calculator already compensates for that 50 percent discharge so keep that in mind if you're using a newer technology like lithium ion where you can get 80 plus percentage of usage out of the battery uh, just keep that in mind that the calculations are going to be off also right here, you'll notice that it's 12, 24, or 48 volt systems. For our system, it's a small system, so we're gonna keep it a 12 volt system. If you do have a larger system, you might be 24 or 48 volts. I will explain more of that in the future. Um, if you are gonna be doing that, but for our circumstance, we're gonna be keeping it at a 12 volt system. Okay, now that we're done sizing the battery bank, we've got it here at 1,090 amp hours. We're gonna go ahead and go on to the solar panels and the charge controller sizing. And for this, the st first step takes you into uh, the average sunlight per day that you get in your area. So this is for the United States. It has a bunch of major cities that you can type in. And for us, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and type in our original home state uh, and city where we started from. We launched from Columbia, Missouri. and this is this gives you about 3.2 hours of sunlight on average per day. Now, to give you a generalized idea of different areas of the world and the United States uh, where you get different amounts of sunlight, you can go ahead and click on this uh, map here, and that will take you through, uh, as you see, the different colors represent 
different uh, amounts of sunlight per day. So we decided to just enter in an average of about four hours per day. And the reason we did that, did that is because we were gonna be traveling uh, between the Northeast and the Southwest of the United States. And as you see in the Southwest, it gets anywhere from you know five to six and in the Northeast gets anywhere from maybe one to three. So we just decided to average out it out at about four. So if you need to see the different areas and locations and the averages, go ahead and click on that map. But I'm going to go ahead and navigate back to our solar calculator and I'm going to enter in four hours for our, not 34 hours, four hours for our um, average sunlight per day. Now in step two, it's going to give you the amount of watts that you need based on your uh, total consumption and the watts of solar panels that you need. So this is about 660 watts of solar panels that you need. And then the last thing you need to know, uh, last couple things you really need to know is how many watts per panel are you going to have? For us, we decided to go with a 150 watt panel, but again, there are a bunch of different options as you can see here. So if we chose 150 watt panels, we would need five panels that would give us about 750 watts of energy. Now, that's uh, 750 watts of energy is obviously more than 660 that we uh, currently need, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna always overcompensate for the number of uh, watts that you need. So if you had maybe, uh, let's say 100 watt panels, you would only need seven panels for 700 watts because that puts you the closest uh, number that's above 660. So, but for our situation, again, we chose 150 watt panels and it'll give us five panels that will uh, produce 750 watts of power. The last thing you're gonna need to know is the solar charge controller sizing. Basically, uh, our solar charge controller needs to be uh, capable of handling about 63 amps of current uh, going between the solar panels and the batteries. So now that you have a good idea of what your system will require, I encourage you to go out and do some more research on what's out there but it may seem overwhelming because there's tons of options and combinations of components that you can put together to create your system. But I wanna reassure you that I will be covering all of this material, the major components, as well as what we incorporated into our system in future videos. Also, now would probably be a good time to go back and look at those limitations that I talked about in the previous video. Specifically, the space limitation, the budget limitation, and the place that you live geographically limitation. And if for some reason that those limitations are conflicting with your needs, it's not over, you can do something about it. If you need to, go back to your appliance list, look at the appliances that you can do without, and then cross them off, recalculate your needs, wash, rinse, and repeat. Okay guys, I'm jumping back here on the solar calculator and as you saw, Jenny went ahead and sacrificed one for the team. We decided to go ahead and take the hair dryer off the appliances that we were gonna use with our solar system. There's a lot of factors that go into that, but basically it had to do with budget and spatial limitations at the time of us uh, calculating our solar needs. Uh, it also has to do with the amount, the size of the inverter that we need to power that appliance. So all of that uh, taken into account, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and enter in our new uh, watt hours per day after the hair dryer is removed from that list and that leaves us with about 1562 don't forget to press enter if you go ahead and recalculate this as you'll see nothing changes in step two or three but you'll notice that the results are much different instead of about 1060 amp hours of battery we only need 839 amp hours and then when it comes to the solar panels and the charge controller Again, nothing changes with the uh, average sunlight per day, uh, but you do notice that instead of needing 660 watts of panels, you only need 507 watts. So that reduces the number of panels that we need from five 150 watt panels down to just four. And that's exactly what we have on our system. Also, the last thing you'll notice is the solar charge controller. Instead of needing to um, compensate for about 63 amps of current, it only needs to compensate for about 50 amps of current just from removing that hair dryer. You may need to make some sacrifices on your end, but if you really want solar power to work for you and your specific needs, that may be the only option that you have. Okay guys, that's gonna do it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to properly size your solar system. If you did, make sure to hit that like button down below. Also, let us know what you think in the comment section below. And you guys know the drill. As always, I will see you on the next video.